Hi, everyone. It is Taria. Thank you for coming back to another What Else is Going On, a.k.a. Vigo podcast episode. I am your girl, Taria. So this is a podcast episode. You can watch it via YouTube. If you're watching, you know that. Hey, y'all. And if you're listening, you know that you can find this wherever it is you find or all of your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon podcasts, all of that good stuff. Um, I would ask, um, y'all know I don't like to ask. Well, that's not true. I'm not going to say I don't like to ask. I'm going to put it out there and ask. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube, but you're subscribed to this audio version, please head on over to YouTube, type in WeGo, W-E-I-G-O podcast and subscribe like and comment. And if you're subscribed to the YouTube, but not the podcast, if you could please find your way over to Apple uh, podcast slash iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is, again, you find any podcast, type in what else is going on and follow this podcast. I would be, I'm so grateful and so thankful. And I just want to thank those of you who are either following one of the other places. I don't take that for granted. I appreciate you being a supporter. Also, if you want to keep the podcast going and growing and um, help me create more time to do more content, you can uh, become a subscribe member of the podcast anywhere from a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Um, shout out to the people who are subscribed and who um, help fund this operation. I appreciate you so fund this operation, although it is fun. I appreciate you so much. But if you click the link in the episode description and decide you want to become a monthly paid uh, subscriber, I would truly appreciate that. All monies go back into the podcast and into the YouTube. So I love y'all. I hope y'all don't hear this thunder because of course it wants to start thundering and lightning as I'm and raining as I'm getting ready to record. So let's get on into it. We are recapping Orange County season 18, episode three. Look at me being professional, y'all. Y'all know I normally just jump right in. It's called Red Flags and Flag Football. So the episode starts off where it left off last week. Now, I didn't get into it. I didn't do uh, its own recap last week. Um, those of you, I know y'all watched it. I was going to. And then I ended up talking with Chai about it a little on Friday's podcast episode with Fly Chai. Go check that out if you have not. But basically, we ended last week's episode with Gina and Jen meeting up in a coffee shop. And Jen telling Gina she need to pay her bill. She a bum. You don't do nothing. Okay. You need to take care of your business and your kids. All of that good stuff. So that's how this episode starts out. So Gina gets so upset because she said Jen showed up in glam, but ain't paying no bills. And Jen is just like, what do you mean? I didn't do this on purpose. My ex didn't pay. I was expecting him too. Gina is basically trying to say, look, you need to rely on yourself. I get why Gina is upset. However, I do. Th I think she has every right to be upset, but I think how she's presenting it is a bit much. And I think Jen is not getting it. Gina is basically saying, look, you're going to end up in the same situation that you're in now and that you've kind of brought me into now because you're relying on somebody. And it's just like, oh, well, they haven't paid my bills. Now I got saved by Ryan but you're not seeing how this could affect me. I get that. Also, I do have a question. I want to know if we know for sure that Jen is the reason why this realtor is not calling Gina back. Did Jen, in fact, really make Gina lose this $50,000 deal? That's what I, I want to know. Anyway, Gina storms out. Jen is still sitting at the table. Gina calls Emily. Listen, I'm going to be very upfront and honest. I have never seen it for Emily. But I can recognize when she has when she does something to contribute to the show. If she's funny on something, I can recognize that. But I just have never seen it for her. I don't like the energy that she's bringing to Jen. And I don't know why I get Gina as her girl. But for her to be the kind of level, the energy that she's bringing to it is like. So Gina's telling her what happened and tells. Uh, and then Emily says Malibu's broke Barbie. Now I had thought something really like out of pocket. And I was like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Um, so I just left a voice note for my girl, Brooke Ashley and, and got it out of my system. <laughs> Shout out to Brooke. We love Brooke over here. 
Um, but I just felt like that was a bit much for her to say Malibu's broke Barbie, like mean girl energy. Jen, in the meantime, calls Shannon. Um, and Jen says she doesn't have a judgment, meaning a judgment like from from the court that Will has to pay or any support. We know since then, however, she has, because I talked about that in a YouTube video a couple of weeks back about how Jen did get like a $250,000 settlement. She walked away with, I think, two checking accounts and some other things, um, some of his retirement. So she did get a settlement. So you could check out that video if you're listening and haven't subscribed. See, when you subscribe, you get, we talk about all things on the YouTube but so she has a settlement since then, but at this particular time she didn't. So she tells Shanna, she doesn't have a judgment or support. The divorce is not final yet. Jen thought she said, now this was funny. I don't think Jen even meant it as shade, but it was funny. Jen told Shannon that she thought Shannon would understand because Shan G Gina lived in a casita. Jen said that Jen is not willing to downsize. Shannon offers to talk to Gina on behalf of, Jen and Jen was like, yeah, I'm willing to talk. She's just got to be willing to stay at the table. We move on. They're getting ready for flag football. They show Tamara getting ready. And she says she can't imagine what costume Shannon is going to show up in. Of course, they flash to Shannon. Sure enough, getting a costume ready. They have a split screen and Tamara is like mocking Shannon like, oh, she's going to show up with black under her eyes and being all silly. Tamara is performing for the cameras like. I can literally see anybody else being like, girl, you know, Shannon going to show up all silly like. I have a costume, but the way Tamara does it just reads so phony to me. Like this is specifically for the cameras. That's how it reads to me. Like she's disassociated, but she's acting for her job. Anyway, um, then in her confessional, Tamara says she wouldn't mind being around Shannon and being cordial. Shannon says in her confessional, according to Tamara, she's a horrible friend. So she hopes that Tamara and Alexis are not on her team. Shannon was trying to iron on numbers and they realized it wasn't plugged up. And Shannon does this laugh that I wonder, I'm like, is this her fake TV laugh where she kind of goes, Ugh. and it doesn't look like she's really laughing. Like it's a put on laugh. I don't know. I don't know if that was for the camera. Like I'm gonna pretend like I ain't know the iron wasn't iron. But then again, I can see somebody being like, why isn't this working? Oh shoot. It's not iron. I mean, it's not on. So these new age irons don't work as good as them old like irons that were 30 pounds each that our grandmoms had. They are the best. My husband does the best ironing in this house. So I'll be like giving my stuff to him or I throw my stuff in the dryer with two ice cubes. Now look, it makes a lot of noise, but it works. It creates, it's like a steamer. You got something real wrinkled, throw it in the dryer for like 20 minutes with two ice cubes. Bam, it does nothing bad to your dryer and it's wrinkle free. Anyway, we get to the place to play flag football. We see Emily and her friend Jody coming in with the supplies. Emily has the the bar people make her a skinny margarita already. She says that the women, the way the women are doing things, like trying to solve their problems, basically isn't working. So let's just beat each other up and walk away. Gina arrives, then Katie. Uh, Katie says she would not, in her confessional, she wouldn't call herself athletic. She was a figure skater for 10 years and went to ISI Worlds and got silver, but she quit when she was a sophomore in high school. Heather then arrives. Um, she decides to be the ref. She brought, she wore something that she could place the polyester ref shirt on top of and tie it in a little knot to make it cute. They knew that Heather was going to show up as a ref. Tamara arrives and then Alexis then Jen. Jen says in her confessional, she's trying to walk in and keep her wits about her and stay calm, but she feels pissed at Gina. So Shannon then arrives. Um, they pick teams. Emily and Tamara are the captains. Everyone who has an issue basically are on opposite teams. So Shannon's on Emily's team. Alexis is on Tamara's team. So they did it like that. Gina is on Emily's team. Jen is on Tamara's team. So that's how they did it. Uh, Tamara says she's just looking for really cute girls on her team, the hot girl club. Now, Emily has them make team shirts. And I said, now, wait a minute. Did you tell them that in the invite? Because they already came dressed to play and now like all cute. And now you get ready to make them make team shirts. I don't like arts and crafts. I'm just going to be upfront about that too. So that would have annoyed me. I mean, I, I would not have let her know that it annoyed me. I would have went along as a team player. I do that with my friends, not trying to spoil the mood, but I would have been like, girl, in my head, what? I hate, I, art was my least favorite subject growing up. I just feel like I'm not good at it. I'm more creative art-wise on the verbal writing side, 
but like anything drawing or arts and crafts is a no for me. I'm not even good at wrapping Christmas presents. But anyway, so she has them create shirts. They're now trying to come up with team names. So Tamara's team suggests hot moms and badass moms. Emily's team suggests the killers, the dominators, or the destroyers. They pick the destroyers. Back to Tamara's team. Tamara says, can we do team love? Girl, Heather was like, no, that is boring. Katie says, maybe we should do team forgiveness and acceptance. Girl, Jen laughs and said, oh, wow, you are in the wrong crowd. Uh, Tamara asked Katie uh, what she's been up to. She says, still getting used to Newport Beach and that she really likes it. Alexis asked her where she moved from and she says San Diego. Tamara then asked how old her kids are and she says her daughter is 19, almost 20. Her sons are 17, 14, and 6. Um, and we know from the last episode that her 14-year-old lives with his father, which is her ex-husband. Heather asked if all her if all of her kids were with her husband. I didn't know if that was weird or not because maybe they talked about how long she had been married and then she remembered, oh, they've been married, let's just say five years. Uh, where well, her oldest is 19. I wonder if and her son is 14. I wonder if all her kids are with her husband. Maybe that's how Heather was thinking. I'm like, there had to be more conversation than that. But if not, do y'all think that was a weird question for Heather just to ask, like, are all y'all are are all of your kids with your husband? Katie didn't seem to mind. Um, she said no. But in her confessional, she said her and her ex-husband were married for 10 years. She got divorced thinking, I'll just be a dog mom. I'll adopt a bunch of dogs and live on a farm in Georgia. Nobody wants a woman, woman with three kids. And then I met this wonderful man that thought it was so endearing that she had three kids and loved her motherly instinct. So it was perfect. And then they show a flashback or or a her helping her son brush his teeth and the husband laughing. Jen then asked Katie if she has talked to Gina at all. Because remember, well, Katie's on the team with Jen and not Gina because all the all the people that aren't getting along are on different teams. Katie says, uh-uh, why? What's going on? Jen explains how Gina helped her get into her last house. Tamara says she was the real estate agent. And Jen says, yes. Uh, she also says the rent wasn't being paid. I didn't have the means to cover the rent like that. I don't have the means to cover the rent like that. And she said um, that Gina said she was an effing joke. Um, I'm out of here. You need to pay your effing bills. Alexis says, wait, she said this to you? And Jen said, yeah. Alexis says, Alexis asked if this animosity was here now between the two of them. And we're all right here. Like Alexis was like, this animosity, like y'all have it right now. And we're all together. I guess Alexis, maybe from the time she was on the show before, would have thought that Jen wouldn't have been able to come in and greet Gina. It would have popped off immediately, but it didn't happen like that. I meant to list out the team. So basically, Tamara's the captain with Jen, Alexis, Katie. And then, and I know I'm probably leaving somebody out. And then Emily's the captain with Gina, Shannon. Somebody else that came with Emily and somebody else shot. And Gina, did I say that? Yeah. Um, so Shannon, now we're at Emily's team, and Shannon says, um, one of you should run the Shay Shay. And I said, Is that is that play named after Shannon Sharp? Because you know he's club Shay Shay. So I thought, well, maybe they got that from him because you know he played professional football. Who knows? Um, so she says, one of us should run club Shay. I mean, club. One of us should run the Shay Shay and the other should um, run through streaking. Someone from that team. And I don't know who it is. Was it Shane's oldest daughter? I don't know. But says, um, oh, you guys practiced. And we get a flashback of Emily, Gina and Shannon practicing. Which is interesting because, I mean, it's a good thing that Emily, Shannon and Gina happened to end up on the same team because they surely had went to go practice with each other. Shannon said, streaking, you just go all the way to the end zone. And Gina says, taking off your top is optional. And I said, well, I'm glad Tamara wasn't on their team because Tamara would have been in the end zone with her titties out like she has been pretty much every season previous. Um, we're back at Tamara's team table. And Jen says that, Jen says that Gina says that Jen is ruining Gina's reputation as a realtor 
And Jen says, I didn't move into the house thinking that I wasn't going to be able to pay my bills. Tamara says, well, I know that she's a new real estate agent and she's worried about her reputation. Jen says, of course. And now in her confessional, Tamara says, I can see both sides of the situation because Jen is not divorced yet and hasn't gone through financials. And she thought he he was going to pay. Like she thought Will was going to keep paying, but he didn't. However, I understand what Gina was saying. Don't move into a house that you know you can't afford. I agreed with Tamara on that. And I can see, I can see where Jen was coming from. Like I've relied on this man since my 20s. He's always taken care of me. Why would I think he wouldn't now? Even if it's not in my um budget, it's in his. So of course he's going to pay. So I can see how she felt that way. She's been taken care of for 20, 20 something years by this man. But then I also see how Gina's like, if you know you can't afford it, don't move into it. So I, I can see uh, both sides of that. So Alexis says, hopefully you guys can have a conversation and be real woman to woman. To Alexis is funny to me. We're back over at Emily's team table, honey, because of the back and forth. Shannon asked, did Alexis talk about her sex life with John? Because Heather told me she did. Because mind you, Heather's going back and forth between the tables. Um, she, Heather didn't tell her then, but I just remembered Heather wasn't officially at either table because she's the ref. Emily says that uh, Alexis said they have sex four times a day. <laughs> the way Shannon says, what? <laughs> like It was just so funny. Shannon can be funny. Um, they flash back to Heather's party and Alexis says a true lady doesn't talk about her sex life, but it's been two today and we still have tonight. So it could be two or three more times tonight. Emily asks, you have sex four times a day? And Heather says, that's exhausting. Now I said, Taria said, listen, I'll tell y'all a little bit of my business. I love physical touch. My love language. In more ways than one, okay? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know, they say wives try to give excuses and don't. I'll just say that, okay? How and ever, four times a day. Let me tell you something. They would have to be drive-bys. Literally like six and a half to seven minutes each. And that might include foreplay. Four times. Listen. You know how they say I'm built for comfort, not speed. In the case of four times a day, I would need to be built for speed. It can still feel the way it needs to, but baby, this cooch is built for speed and not comfort at four times a day. I mean, I want to be comfortable too, but four times a day, y'all know when you have to use the bathroom and it's like, absolutely not. Not no every day. We're not doing that four times. Even if it was once a day, you want to do it once a day? Fine. I could do that. Because again, it's giving. However, four times a day, every day is not giving anything. But me having to hover over the toilet in my own clean bathroom because everything hurts to sit down. It's giving. We're not doing that. Anyway, you're not about to, I mean, four times a day, you're not about to have me have to have the first coochie transplant. All right. Anyway, like I said, four to five times a week, sure. Four times a day, no. In her confessional, Shannon said, let's be realistic. Can someone 62 really have four times a day? What pill are you taking? Shannon, that's precisely why he can have sex four times a day if he is because he's taking a pill. And hey, science is great. Do what you got to do. That gives us all hope when we get to that age to still be doing it. I know me, so great. But that's why he's able to do it that many times um, a day. Um, Shannon says to the table, can I tell you something? I've been working out with Steve and my trainer. She, um, she said she's known him approaching six years. She introduced John to him. She said, and guess who was at the gym? That's my gym, 30 minutes before Emily, Gina, and Shannon had arrived the other night. Um, and she was like, he's taking her to my gym. He can go, can't they go find another gym? Stay the F away from mine. Gina says, there's certain things you have to let go. And in her confessional, Gina says, anybody would be upset. I don't care if you haven't worked out there in four years. 
I still wouldn't be F I still wouldn't want my effing ex boyfriend now claiming my gym. She said, there's, there's so many effing places to work out in orange County. Look around. Everybody has an effing six pack. Find the new gym, bro. Find the new gym, bro. Shannon says, what are they trying to do? Find another gym. And the way Shannon said that, it felt like she was saying, are they trying to break me? Are they trying to make me go crazy? Because we know Shannon can lose it sometimes, right? But if you go back and listen, just the way she said, what are they trying to do? Find another gym. I felt Shannon on that. Yes, you can't claim a gym. However, now all of a sudden, John, you want to be going to this gym? You and my trainer are that close? Maybe, but I still feel like Shannon. Um, they get ready to play the game. Alexis says to Gina, don't you... Uh, don't you run, girl? And Gina says, I don't run. Um, she says she spends her time avoiding running. Alexis says, that's not true because you went to the gym. My trainer, our trainer, John's trainer told me that you guys were there and that you throw a football really good. Alexis is a housewife, meaning she's been one before. She knows how this game works. So she found it in to bring that up by saying you run. Anyway. Gina says, thank you for that. And then brings up that she just heard that John and Alexis were going to that gym. Alexis said, well, yeah, because John goes there and I train with him. I have my own trainer. Gina says, doesn't that make you, un doesn't that make you uncomfortable though? Gina. Alexis says she hasn't been there for six effing months. And Gina says, really? Alexis says, no. Uh, Gina said there's different sides of the story. So in her confessional, Alexis says, it's John's gym. Now, hear me clearly. Alexis says, it's John's gym. Then she says, and by the way, you can't call it your gym unless you bought the place. Do you own it? I mean, does John own it? Because you literally just said, it's John's gym. And she thought she was doing something. It's John's gym. And by the way, you can't call it your gym unless you bought it. I mean, unless you own it. Did you buy it? Did John buy it? Because you called it John's gym. Alexis, you work at my nerves, but it is giving story, right? Uh, Gina tells Shannon about the conversation that she literally just had with Alexis um, 0.3 seconds ago. And Shannon says, you mean she called it my gym? Are you effing kidding me? <laughs> I love, oh, child, I was going to say, I love Shannon. I'm liking Shannon this season on the show. Uh, none of them know how to play the game, child. They said they bored. They go through all the ladies giving their little things. They bored. They don't watch it. They don't like it. They don't know why they're here. I would rather be anywhere else, but I'm here. They play and eventually Alexis pulls Shannon's flag. In her confessional, Heather says, oh, that hurts. One more thing Alexis took from Shannon. Now I have to say, is it me? Or am I the only one thinking that? They all keep saying Alexis took John. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Heather said one more thing Alexis took from Shannon. I don't feel like Alexis took John from Shannon because John and Shannon were broke up. And then him and Alexis started talking. It's not like Alexis and John, I mean, Shannon and John were officially still together. And Alexis set her sights on him and swooped in. They were already broken up, right? So she didn't take John from Shannon. And maybe that's me just putting too much emphasis on what they're saying, but that's what they're all are saying. And I'm like, she didn't take anyway. Um, then she says, uh, Heather says, well, whatever. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. They were already broken up then. Oh, then Heather says whatever she needs to do to win because team Shannon ended up winning Emily. Oh, so the destroyers won, which was the team that Emily was on. Emily says, Destroy your wins in the end and love sucks. So just F love. I already told y'all how I feel about Emily. Anyway, afterwards, they all sit down for pizza, except for Alexis. I think Alexis is either son or daughter. Somebody had a dance, some type of dance that she had to go to. I forget. So Tamara, Heather, Gina, and Emily are walking together. And Shannon sits down at the table with Jen and Katie. And Shannon says, am I the topic of conversation over there? Meaning among Heather, Tamara, Jen, uh, Gina, and Emily. And uh, Jen says, no, I think it's about me because of what happened between me and Gina. And then in her confessional, Katie says, what I gather from Jen is that Jen was surviving in the moment. She didn't know what to do. 
but Gina has the right to be angry so she can see both sides. Shannon then says, well, Jen and Gina need to talk. So now they all sit down at one table and Gina starts out by saying to Jen that she's not thrilled about how the conversation happened and how they left it. And Jen says, well, me either, Gina. I just figured out, I j wait, Gina, I just figured that out of any of us, basically Gina would understand because Gina has been in a hard spot. Gina said, which is why I helped you. Jen said, I think you misunderstand. I don't have a judgment, meaning a judgment from the judge for money from the ex. I don't have a judgment. So you keep telling me to figure it out and hustle. Um, and in the three years I separated, I never questioned my rent being paid. Gina said, no matter what the situation was, I'm sympathetic to it. I understand there's a problem there with you or your ex wait, with you or your ex or whatever, but you signed a contract and you have bills to pay. Jen says, I'm more aware of that than you are. And I get, child, when you got a bill to pay, you are aware that you got that bill to pay, especially when you have multiple. Jen says, so all I owe you, and she started to say was, all I owe you is an apology. Then she stopped and said, a thank you for helping me. Gina said, no, 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 no. This burnt me bad, Jen. Jen says, okay, like, and I don't even think she meant it sarcastic, but it was like, okay, it burnt, this burnt me bad, Jen, okay. Uh, Gina says, I put someone in a home that wasn't paying their bills, Jen. I had a good relationship with this agent. This woman won't even return my calls. Side note, y'all, the way Tamara was eating that pizza, it looked so good that I kept thinking about that pizza and I ended up having whole pizza Sunday yesterday. For those of you that don't know, real quick, I, I said it on one of my, on my YouTube video yesterday. So my boo Raven from Is Bitch Better podcast, shout out to Raven, years ago told me about Whole Pizza Sunday, where basically you need to rejuvenate yourself, relax, relate, release. And if you love pizza, she would get up on a Sunday, order a whole pizza, be at home, like watching shows, TV, whatever, and would just eat on the pizza throughout the day. And that's what I did yesterday. I wanted Domino's. I like all different types pizza but yesterday was Domino's and I had me some yesterday pepperoni pizza with extra sauce I get that no matter where I go whether it's Lido's wherever I love that pizza so anyway the way Tamara was eating that pizza made me get pizza on <laughs> yesterday so um Jen says so after Gina says the realtor doesn't return her call Jen says they return mine Gina said, yeah, she's going to return your calls because she represents the woman in the house that you're squatting in. Child, the look, Tamara literally jumped. And I don't think that was fake. I think that was an actual real reaction. Um, and the look on Heather's face was mine as well. Like, if y'all are watching the YouTube video, y'all see the face I made. It's the face Heather made. Like, because I felt like that was really, 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 really too far. Jen says, I'm squatting. Gina says, you were. Emily butts in and says, you're squatting. You're a squatter. Gina says, until you got asked to leave. Now, listen, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. Emily's energy with Jen is pissing me off. I don't understand why Emily has this energy with Jen. Like, what did Jen do to you? This is what I feel. Emily has been talking about, oh, Shane, what, about her going to the gym, her working out, her being obsessive worrying about her body. And she knows that if something were to happen with her and Shane, he'd leave her for somebody younger and hotter, right? However, I think she looks at Jen and sees a hot woman. This is what I think Emily thinks. She looks at Jen, she sees a hot woman who's been taken care of her entire life. First, her parents, then her ex-husband, taking care of her life. She never had to worry about anything. And now Ryan has come in and said, move in with me. Said, I'll absorb your car payment. You'll drive one of my cars, which we'll get into later. And I think Emily looks at Jen like that's the kind, because I believe, and didn't Emily say some hot blonde or something that Shane would basically run off with if something happened to them? I think Emily looks at Jen as the type of woman that Shane would want. She got the body, she blonde, she's hot. And Jen has had men offer up themselves to take care of her. And Emily has never had that opportunity and it pisses Emily off. That is truly what I think, because why else do you, again, I get that Gina is your friend, but why do you have this energy for her? Cause it is nasty mean girl energy. Like her jumping in, you're a squatter girl. 
even if I was in Jen's position, the way I would have had to get Emily together. Okay. Anyway. So like I said, I think that she looks at Emily as, I mean, she looks, Emily looks at Jen as hot, nice body, men taking care of her. And it just irks her. Anyway. Because like I said, what other reason does she have to come at her? Uh, so Tamara says, okay, guys. And Heather says, we don't have to use that word. Jen says, I'm not a squatter. I was freaking the F out. Gina says, I wish you would have called me though, Jen, as a friend, because I was freaking the F out too. Tamara jumped in and said, speaking as an outsider, I think that Jen married Will very young and Will took care, Will took care of you. And a lot of it is learning. Jen said, I'm learning and I had no access to anything. So Emily does like the cuckoo sign, like twirling her finger near her head and says, oh, you know what I mean? Like, as if, am I the only one that thinks she's crazy? And I truly, again, believe it's because em Emily doesn't know from that life because Emily's never been offered that life. Anyway, Jen says to Emily, she calls her out, which I'm glad. Why are you being so judgy about it? Emily says, you could do things legally. You could go into court. Heather had to explain to Emily, she's saying that she didn't know. So basically it's not like Jen knew, while yes, she should have had herself in a better position, right? However, she was used to this man taking care of her. She had no clue it was gonna go left like this. So why would she have gone to court? Because he's been taking care of her. But again, like I said earlier, we do know that since then Jen has gotten her settlement and things. Um, so, Jen then, oh, so then in her confessional, Jen says, it's scary to be 46 and to try to figure out how to do things that people learn in their 20s. The producer says, at what age did you have a credit card in your name? Jen said, I've never had a credit card in my name and I never knew what fear was and stress like this. It's a new spot for me. She then tells the ladies, I want to stand on my own. I don't want to not know finances, my car not being paid. Tamara asked her, was her car repossessed? And Jen says, no, I got rid of it. They flash back to Ryan basically telling her, you're upside down $24,000. I'm gonna give you one of my cars, take your car and basically trade it in and absorb the equity. So Emily then says, so Ryan absorbed the deficit and Yes, like I said, he just added it to his car payment. Gina says, you need to make changes so that you're in the driver's seat. I said, oh, did she come up with that off the top? Because they were just talking about cars. Okay, Gina. Emily says, because what happens when Ryan gets mad at you because he absorbed that $24,000 debt? As much as Emily wears me thin, she does have a point. These are things that Jen needs to be thinking about and not get comfortable Jen said, if something were to happen with Ryan, I'm literally homeless and I do not have a car. So Heather says, so let's fix that now. Um, so I said, cut her a check, bro. You got it. Gina says, then they get up and Gina said, well, Emily's like, I have awards to give out. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Let me go back. That was too quick. Heather says, let's fix that now. So Gina says, uh, to Jen, I never thought you were a bad person. I understand you were at a point in your life where you had to be selfish because I've been there too. I've literally said that, so I get it. I just got a little burnt by it. I'm still in this scary zone too. Travis is moving out. I have a lot going on. So everyone at the table is like, oh my God. And Jen says, Travis is moving out. The ladies look shocked and concerned. Gina says, it's okay. It's okay. We can't afford a house. Um, the size that we need. And I don't want to make a bad financial decision. So she really has to button down. They both got destroyed by their divorces and she's rebounding and he's working so hard to move forward. So um, Heather says, oh, but he has to go to court and pay more money. So in her confessional, Heather says she knew something was going on with Gina and Travis and they show a scene, a flashback scene of Gina and Heather talking and Gina saying Travis's ex makes everything so difficult. She said her co-parenting relationship with Matt, Gina's ex is so great. And so she can keep building, 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 but she feels like it's hard for Trav to because he keeps getting pulled back. She is with us. Uh, so that's where she is with all the change in her life. So Heather's like, I'm very impressed by Gina um, and how she's handling everything so maturely. She said that in her confessional. 
Gina then tells the ladies it's her decision because what happens, it's like she's moving forward financially. Now she has a little extra and she can spend it on vacation or with her kids. But basically she has enough for her three kids. And how do you spend on three and not six? Because Travis has three. She said, and then I have guilt. And so she's holding back for hers, but then that builds a resentment. I get that. That makes sense. Jen says, you're not breaking up. And Gina said, no. Gina said, no, I don't. No, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain it. In her confessional, Tamara says, I know nobody that has lived together for four years and then said, oh, by the way, you need to move out, but we're still going to stay together. No, it doesn't make any sense to me. And look, I thought that too, but maybe this will be something that's good for them. It looks like Gina and Travis are still together. Gina says, I'm moving forward a lot too. So I had to be selfish in this moment. And Jen says, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Gina says, and I know why you are like meaning I know why you're being selfish, Jen, because I've been selfish um, and I made harsh comments to you and I'm really sorry. Like, I don't want bad for you. I want good things for you. I do. Emily then says, I have some awards to give out. Why you ain't apologized for your unnecessarily harsh comments, Emily. Anyway. Emily stands up and gives out awards. Uh, let's see who gets what, because I have this in my notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As Emily announces they have awards, they, she has awards, they all get up to go to the award station. Um, in her confessional, uh, Gina says she feels unsettled in her relationship. So the situation with Jen has made things stressful for her. Her and Jen end up hugging. Um, and then in her confessional, again, she says, I want Jen to take responsibility for her situation. And also side note, please don't run me over with your BS next time. <sighs> All right, moving on. Emily gives out her awards. Gina got MVP. Heather got least valuable player because she's the ref. And Emily gave the you tried hard award to Jen. But then in her confessional, she says, you tried to, uh, you tried to play. You tried to pay your rent tried to pay your car. You tried to drive a Range Rover. It's not really working out, but you tried. I said, now see, I said, and I'm gonna preface this by saying, I never thought Emily was big. I think her body was great before and I think her body is great now. However, I know as a woman what it's like a hundred people could tell, a thousand, a million people could tell you you look great, but if you don't feel like you're at your fighting weight or where you want to be, it doesn't matter, right? And I get that's what was going on with Emily. But what if somebody during her time in the middle of her weight loss had said, we're going to give you the you tried award because we see you trying, but you haven't lost weight. Like, what if somebody had said that during the time that she was fighting through before she started going to the gym and did Ozempic for a little bit and different things? before she got her, I think her hip surgery and was able to move. What if somebody said that to her? I, again, I go mean girl energy. Why did you have to say all that? Like, I feel like Emily can be funny, but I feel like now it's her shtick and she's trying to make confessionals funny and people may find it funny, but for me, she's irritating. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Emily, Sh Emily and Shannon go to Emily's, uh, uh, boudoir shoot because it's her 15th anniversary. She said the man has everything he ever wants. He'd probably want a car part or something. Um, so she wants to get him something that he'll remember. I did a boudoir shot for my, for Corey some years ago and I loved it. I loved them. Um, then he put it on a CD on a slideshow, the photographer and had music to it. Um, I really loved it. I have some still shots from it too. I really loved doing it. But anyway, I'm just going to wrap this part up because but I, I did like, Emily did share with Shannon that Shane has said she's become obsessive about working out. And if she misses a day, she gets upset. And Emily even beats herself up because she's so scared of going back. Shannon can identify with Gina because she struggled with weight. You know, when Shannon came on, she was very slim, looking pretty much almost like how she looks now. Right. And, um, then we saw her gain weight on the show and they show a flashback of her going to her trainer and her taking off her shirt and him taking pictures going, whoa, wow. And we know, I was going to say as women, but men probably feel it too, but I can speak from being a woman's perspective, how that just plays on you mentally when you don't feel like you're at 
your best, right? So, and your clothes don't fit the way they used to fit and you don't feel the way you used to feel. Then you wonder, is my partner still attracted? Because I don't even like looking at myself. You know, things that women think about. Um, so Shannon can identify with Emily um, with that. So it's good that she went to the bood boudoir shoot. I did think it was funny. Shannon sitting on that couch with them ears on and that whip. I felt like that was really Shannon. Like she wasn't really putting on like that was Shannon. All right. So we're going to um, go through. We're going to move along through that scene. Next, Tamara, Jen, and Alexis meet up for a walk with their dogs. Alexis sh shows up with a dog that looks exactly like Archie, Shannon Bedore's dog. Girl, Tamara said, did you steal Archie from Shannon too? <laughs> Does it ever end? First her boyfriend, now her dog. Again, I don't think that Alexis necessarily stole John. In her confessional, Jen says, Alexis, you couldn't have left Shannon with something. Archie is all she's got. Um, they fill Alexis in on what happened with Jen and Gina. Tamara says that Jen got annihilated. Um, and she said, listen, Jen, I don't want you to get into the same situation that you were in with Will. You're living in a beautiful house, Ryan's house, driving one of his cars, Ryan's cars. I don't want you to just be okay with that. You can't put your head down again, Jen. Um, Tamara says the gym business is great, but it doesn't pay the bills. So in her confessional, Jen says her partners and her yoga, she has partners in her yoga studio, but they don't pay themselves. It's been slow. They show a flashback of her filming and talking to one of her partners. And her partner says, this is a five-star yoga studio and our social media is ridiculous. Jen says, I agree. Her partner says, that's what we need help with. Um, Jen says the fact that uh, she sometimes sits and thinks that the business may fail, the yoga business is paralyzing. Um, Tamara was in her confessional and said, basically her and Eddie were the only owners of their gym and it's not a moneymaker. Her fear is things aren't going to work out for the gym with Jen or with, and then with Jen and Ryan. And then what does she have? She doesn't have anything. So Jen brings up the gym conversation about Shannon and John going, uh, not Shannon, about John and Alexis going to the same gym, what have you. Um, she says, Shannon mentioned you're going to her gym. Alexis says, we've been training there for three to four months and all of a sudden she shows up. And then I, I think I might have blocked out on this part quickly because I think that Alexis mentioned Shannon saying something to the trainer because then we get to um, Shannon says to Emily at the boudoir shoot, like at the end, that Alex, who was at the gym, basically says to Alexis and John, we don't want any drama here. Then Alexis says, I'm a good Christian girl. And he said something like, oh, Christian girls who talk about their sex life. Emily was like, he said that to her. I would think that too, because you've just been coming here for three or four months and now he's just going to say something like that to you. Whether he got that from Shannon or not and has known Shannon longer, why he would say that to her, I don't know. And so then John is like, F you, F you, we're never coming back here again. And he kept saying, Shannon is behind all of this. Shannon says she was like, no, I'm not. They jump back to Alexis. And Alexis says, how would anyone even know, Tamara? In her confessional, Alexis says, there's no way he's going to know about a luncheon where I bring up sex. Uh, child, my notes say, Kate, what happened? Because I was using voice notes. Basically, she's saying the only way, the only place she brought up her sex life with all the ladies was the luncheon. So how is it that now Alex, the trainer, knows? And that's why I said I must have blacked out because we went from Alexis talking about going to the gym for three or four months and Shannon just showing up to Shannon telling Emily what the trainer Alex, this other person, said and then getting back to Alexis and Alexis being upset like, how would he even know about my sex life? I brought it up at the luncheon. But anyway, we know it was brought up. And if it wasn't Shannon, let's be honest, though, who else said it, right? Um, anyway, so then Jen says she feels like, uh, Sh Jen says to Alexis, basically Shannon feels like you're everywhere. You're hanging out with a friend group. You're at the gym. And I get that. It's like, dang, not only is she dating my ex, I got to see this chick everywhere. And when I see her, John is constantly brought up. And it doesn't seem like it's in a natural way. Like at Heather's luncheon, it seemed like either Tamara was prompting Alexis or Alexis was bringing up John. Alexis says, I've known Tamara longer 
um, she doesn't, I basically, I've known Tamara longer, so she doesn't have to, she doesn't have a say. It's not her effing friends. I've been friends with you for way longer. I'm very close to Heather. Does she get ownership now? Emily, we're back at the boudoir shoot. Emily says to Shannon, it's very single white female. Shannon says, is Alexis trying to live the life that I have? Shannon says this in her confessional. Is she, is, is Alexis trying to live the life that she had? She's with my ex-boyfriend. She's getting love bombed like I did. They're going to the same restaurants. They're riding, they're riding on the boat. Cause remember Shannon would be like, we're going out on the boat. They go to the same gym. He took her to the same hotel for her birthday that he took me for mine. Alexis, good luck trying to be me. Alexis then tells Tamara and Jen, the only thing I care about is that she needs to redeem my man's name. I was like, girl, get out of here. If Shannon had a certain experience with John, that's her experience and she can share it. So for Alexis to be like, he, she needs to redeem my man's name. If certain things happen in Shannon and John's relationship, that you don't believe that's on you. A lot of times, I won't say a lot of times, but there are times when the new woman doesn't want to believe what the old woman has said about the man. And sometimes it can be a lie or a way to try to get the new woman not to want to be with him. But sometimes it's the truth. But the new woman, because she hasn't had that experience, wants to say the old, the ex is lying. But that's not always the case. So for Alexis to say, She's better redeem my man's name. Girl, who are you? This is my experience with John. You're not going to tell me what I can and cannot say about my experience when I was with him. Just like I can't tell you what you can and cannot say while you're with him. Talking about your sex life, going to the gym. It's the same on both ends. Because I was like, girl, please. Um, so again, Alexis says she better redeem my man's name. And Tamara says she'll never do that. Child, Alexis says the truth is coming out whether she wants to, wants, whether she wants to do it or not. John is not going to hold his mouth forever. He's over it. And Tamara says, "Yeah." Again, Alexis, hope this, hope you're not saying the same thing that Shannon is saying a year from now because you went through that same experience with him. Um, then we show a scene with Heather. She's looks like she's out on a balcony in a robe calling Terry via FaceTime. And he says, what are you wearing? She says, I'm sitting outside. I can't show you all that right now. It was cute. This is funny. They show Shannon and Archie and Shannon's home is gorgeous. I'd love her home. Child Archie was laying nice and content in front of the glass doors. I love me glass doors and the fireplace. Shannon came in to light that fireplace. It was like Archie knew he jumped right up. And she was like, I hate doing this child when she lit that fireplace. And it said, whoof, the fire came out. I said, see, Archie said, let me get my tail up from out of here. My big tail and my tail on the end of my tail for the end up burn up. We go to Jen and Ryan. They're in the pool for the night. Jen's like, how do we manage to do this? No kids for the night. Child Ryan takes off her top. And all I could think about was Kenya Moore when they went to Cynthia's breast appointment and Kenya was like, hey, <laughs> Y'all remember that? That's all I could think about when her top came off. Now we get to the last scene of the episode. Katie, Gina, and Sutton meet up for lunch. Katie arrives first, then Gina arrives. It seems like shortly after. Gina says, I'm not surprised that she's late, meaning Sutton. And Katie says, I'm not either. Her assistant normally keeps her in line with time. Gina says, it's hard to corral that kind of personality. She's got a lot. Sutton arrives with her dog. Um, Sutton gives Katie a hug. And Katie says, I haven't seen you since Christmas. And Sutton says, yes, since my party. Gina says, where I didn't receive an invitation. Sutton says they have to fix that next year, which I thought was, why wouldn't you invite her? In her confessional, Gina tells us again, because she told us when Katie was first introduced, but that Katie and her met through Sutton. Katie was moving to Orange County and Sutton knew that Gina was a real estate agent. And so she connected the two of them. Gina knows Sutton because Sutton's, ex-husband is the president of the mutual fund where Matt, Gina's ex-husband, used to work. Then she laughs and said, except Sutton did way better in her divorce than I did. It sucks, but it's true. I said, Shaw, you ain't never lied about that. Gina asked Sutton, how did Sutton and Katie meet? Um, and so Katie's husband is into golf. And, Gina, and then Sutton says, I'm 
Oh, let me go back. Katie's husband is into golf. Katie's from Georgia. Sutton is from Augusta. And then she said to Gina, do you know about Augusta? And Gina was like, uh-uh. And Sutton says, okay, and laughs. And she says, Gina, Augusta, Georgia, that's what we're known for is the Masters Golf Tournament. And Sutton's business partner told her that she needed to meet Katie, like they needed to meet each other. And she was like, okay. Now in her confessional, Katie said the first time that she met Sutton, her and Sutton had a miscommunication. Shocker. And she, uh, Sutton told Katie, I think you're a little dim. I said, now see, this confirms what I have always felt about Sutton. Okay. For those of y'all that have been listening to the podcast, since Sutton came on RHOBH, I haven't really cared for Sutton. I'm going to be honest. Um, Cause I felt like she's the type of woman that feels like she has the privilege to say whatever she wants to say to somebody. And then when somebody says something back or checks her or calls her out on her privilege, here come the tears. I'm just go back real quick. Cause the people didn't like it or uh, forget. But remember when Crystal and Kyle on RHOBH were having a conversation about race and all of that. And Kyle asked Crystal about her experience, basically as an Asian woman, and Crystal went to talk about it and Sutton jumps in the conversation and says, no, we're not talking about that. Like, no, we're not talking about racism because it made her uncomfortable. And Crystal called her out and said, oh, you're one of those who don't see race. Then the next day, tr Crystal tried to have a conversation with Sutton because Sutton was asking her about it. So Crystal tried to talk about her dad, how he felt coming to this country, being in this country. Sutton made it about her being called a racist and felt like, ba and basically discounted what Crystal was saying her dad felt about actually not being white in this country and how he was actually treated and chased from a gas station, or I mean, had to leave a gas station because of being threatened because he was Asian to Sutton saying, well, somebody assumed she was racist because she was from the South. And Sutton had them white woman tears and then when Crystal didn't want to be bothered with her, when she tried again to come to her on that boat, Crystal was like, I'm over it. The people got mad at Crystal and went where? Right to the blonde woman's side. Even the ladies on the show, when Crystal used the word violated, which she used correctly, if you look at the definition, because that, and that's how she felt. All of the ladies, all of the ladies immediately sided with Sutton. But yet Sutton could say whatever, would say whatever she wanted to say out of her mouth. So when Katie said she called, we had a miscommunication, she called me dim. I said, mm-hmm. That confirms to me that Sutton is exactly who I think she is. But I'm gonna let the people have that because she is entertaining on RHOBH. But I will never forget how she tried to shut down that race conversation. Moving forward, anyway, Katie says. Sutton called her dim. She was like, what the F do you mean by that? And she felt like Sutton liked her because she pushed back on her. Katie said Sutton is very blunt and outspoken and she owns it. Now, I don't think she actually owns it, but Katie says, I really appreciate that about somebody. Um, anyway. <sighs> Sutton then said she moved to Orange County in 2008 and she loved her time there and made really great friends there. She told Katie, you're going to make really great friends here. And Katie said, yeah, that's what Gina said. So Sutton says, I want to know everything. Um, tell me, how's everything going? Have you met Heather? Sutton says, have you met Heather? Right. Katie says, I have. Now let's go back. When Katie was introduced to us, she tells us, I met Heather this at Katie at Heather's luncheon. Katie says, I met Heather at Sutton's party. So it makes you think, oh, she met her, but now she's acting like she didn't know her. But now Katie says she was at Sutton's party. Heather knew who I was. She turns around. She stares at me for like five seconds and then turns back around. I wonder if somebody said that's the girl that's going to be on your show. And Heather kind of turned around and looked, but didn't say anything to her because Katie said Heather knew who I was. How would she have known who you were at Sutton's party? Because again, you said you met Heather at Sutton's party, but you never met. She just looked at you and you said she knew who I was. 
I almost feel like she wanted to say she knew I was joining the show, but they can't say that. And she didn't speak to me. And so Katie was offended, which I guess. Anyway, uh, so I believe that Katie has like a little play on words. Um, she then said, and she ignored that though and followed Heather on social media. She said, and I guess there was a picture Heather posted and Heather looked pretty. So she liked it. She said the next morning she woke up and Heather had tagged her in the picture. So Sutton said, this was funny. Were you in it? Katie says, no. Then Sutton says, if I were you. And Gina jumps in and says, I want them two to get along. Sutton says, oh, I wouldn't go up against Heather. I would hide under the table. Katie said in her confessional that meeting Heather was great, even though it was the first time she's acknowledged my presence. So again, I guess she's upset that Heather looked her in her face for five seconds and didn't speak. Um, even though, and then they flash back to Heather saying, it's nice to meet you to Katie at her luncheon. Sutton speaks so highly of you. So then Katie says, I do want to get to know her and give her the benefit of the doubt, but she's playing two different roles with me. I don't feel like Heather. Now I wasn't at the party. And yes, Heather's my girl. I like Heather because I like that she is who she is. And she ain't trying to change because of the odd, the viewer perception of her. She likes what she likes. She likes money. She likes fine things. And that's just it. She's not trying to play to the viewer. So I like that. Um, however, she says, uh, what was it again? She said, oh, Heather's playing two different roles with her. If you're saying you were at a Sutton's party, Heather turned around, looked at you for five seconds and turned back around. Boom, didn't say nothing to you. Now you're at a luncheon that she's throwing, a part of her cast. So she comes up, she introduces herself to you. Of course she would. So I feel like it's a lot of non-show stuff going on that they can't really say, but Katie's bringing it in as an issue with Heather. So it's kind of like, Mm, but it's a lot of non-show stuff that may make even more sense to us if they if she could talk about it, right? So that's what I feel like. And I do feel like the new girls lately have been coming in, coming for Heather. I even heard somebody say, Heather's going to get her come up at this season. So I was like, well, what has she done to the ladies in the past, any of these ladies, to deserve a come up in? Because they will, they I mean, they haven't been shy to say things to her since the beginning. At least Tamara hasn't. Tamara's the one that brought Heather on originally. So I don't know. I just think that's interesting how it seems like, I feel like Katie kind of wants to almost have an issue with her. Now, Heather tagging her, it is kind of like weird. But then I want to know, did Heather tag all the ladies in the cast and then when Katie liked it, was like, well, she's going to be a part of my cast. Let me tag her. Because that is a little bit weird, though. You liked it and now I tag you. That's the only thing I can think of. Because other than that, I'm with Katie. Like, oh, that's weird. You ain't speak. I like. Now, I could see if Katie commented, you look gorgeous. Heather commented back. Oh, great. And then they follow each other. But to tag her in it, if she wasn't in it. But again, if Heather had tagged all the other housewives, that were there. Then she's like, okay, she's going to be a housewife. Let me tag her. I don't know. Heather, I need you to address this. Anyway, so Katie basically again says she wants to get to know her, blah, blah, blah. Sutton says, what does the woman say? And I, I was like, Sutton, what woman? But I do like this analogy. And I thought it was cute the way Sutton said it. Sutton said, what does that woman say? If a pig came into my kitchen, I'd make it bacon. You're going to get eight. I thought that was cute how Sutton said it. Um, she says, so don't be the pig walking in the kitchen and you won't get eight. And then they start laughing. And that lunch was over. It was a cute lunch. Again, I just have to realize I have to watch Sutton the same way I used to watch Ramona. Take that for what you will. Gina and uh, Shane have a comp, not Gina, I'm sorry, child. Emily and Shane have a conversation about his health. Emily's working out. Um, Shane doesn't work out. He walks around with big gulps and the family's concerned for him. She says men have heart attacks on the golf course all the time. Shane says, lucky for him, he don't play golf. 
They want him to get healthy. Moving on, it's moving day for Travis. And Gina asked Travis how he feels. And you can tell that it's emotional for him. She keeps saying it's for the kids. And he says, you need to stop saying it's for the kids. And I do agree. Just stand by the decision that you made, Gina. Um, at one point, she says to Travis, what if this was a mistake? And Travis says, people make mistakes and they end up figuring it out. But if it's a mistake, then it ends up being whatever it is. Gina says, we'll deal with it. And Travis just kind of looks and says, you're effing funny. Um, she says, I know right now I'm manic because I see your stuff going in a bag and it's hard to watch you moving out of our house. And she's getting emotional. It's confusing because we're not breaking up and I don't want us to break up. So it's hard. And I do think this is the right decision. I see things that we're gaining by doing this, uh, but I don't want us to break up. She says, now I'm actually faced with the reality that you're not going to be here tonight. And that feels bad. Travis gets emotional and just says, yep. I also feel like he's thinking you're full of it. I truly feel like he's thinking this to Gina, like meaning you wouldn't be going through all these emotions if I just stayed here, but now you've made the decision and now you're sitting here basically get ready to cry to me, telling me how hard it is with Gina. I understand why she feels that way. It's easy to, for something to make sense in your brain. And you feel like you've processed it in your brain. This is what has to happen. And then now it's really happening. I get why she's still emotional about it, even though she made the decision. But I also get why Travis is like, you're funny. You're the one that made this decision. So Gina says in her confessional, it's about her needing space from Travis's past. Oh, I'm sorry. They show a flashback of Gina sitting with Heather and child, wait a minute, I missed that. But basically it's about Gina making this decision um, for herself. She needs to make space from Travis's ex his and his past. You know, she's moving forward, but Travis is still burdened down by his ex who makes things difficult. And she needs to have space from um, Travis's ex and his past. She's choosing herself and her three kids over their family. That's what she said, over our family as a whole. There's like tremendous guilt about it. Travis tells her, it seems like you're talking about, she, Travis said, it seems like all you're doing is talking about how to undo the decision that you made. It's really confusing. Because again, she's like, is it a mistake? I feel guilty. Maybe this isn't the right choice, but you made this decision. And now I'm literally carrying out your decision. And you're like, should we be doing this? And it's confusing to him. Gina says, I do love my life and I do love my family, but there's something here that's just not functioning right because the children need more space. She brings up the kids again. And he says, I think you have to stop saying it's about the children because honestly, you made the decision, okay? There's that K again. I hate when people say K. Okay. I don't know why. My dad sent that to me and I was like, no. And then my husband sent it to me before I said, don't you ever, no. K is like, no. Anyway. Travis says, I think the kids would prefer to be in this space as one than separate. And I can't say that I totally disagree with them. So again, he's letting her know, you keep saying this is about the kids, but I feel like the kids would want to stay together as a family unit. Then he says, well, I'm almost packed. Gina says, I don't want you to resent me because of this. That's what I'm afraid of. So Travis says, the good thing for you is that for whatever reason, I don't hold on to things that lets me know. Yes, he is feeling a type of way and it may be a little bit of resentment, but he's not going to hold on to it. He loads up the car, gives her and the dog a hug and she watches him leave and tells him, call me when you're over there and let me know how it's going. He says, it sounds good. And the episode ends y'all orange County is really giving us something. I'm really, truly enjoying it. Even the girls that work my nerves are bringing something to the show. I'm really, really feeling like, this is giving it to us. So y'all let me know what y'all think about Orange County. Are you enjoying it? Who are your girls this season? Or have you always uh, stuck by the same girl? And it's so funny because I always see people, people say stuff about Tamara. And I'm like, does Tamara have fans out there who are rooting her on? So y'all let me know if y'all are um, Tamara girls from back in the day and still riding with Tamara. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all of this. I love y'all so much. Make sure to... Uh, subscribe to the podcast via YouTube and via wherever it is you listen to your comments and I mean Lord wherever you listen to your podcast and make sure to rate 
review, subscribe, like, comment, all of that stuff. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for riding with me. And I kept my word. Back on track. Hopefully. Talk to y'all later.